Hi, my name is Silky, and I'm your local vampire. I'm Sammy, and I'm your average demon. And welcome to the Spook Hour. Spook Hour. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've decided that we're going to start things off with a little bit of our week. Uh, Sammy has a spooky story that happened to her this week. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a spooky story, but it, it's a funny spooky story. Which is, you know, they're... they're those are the good kind of spooky stories, along with the scary ones. For sure, it is. So, Sammy, what happened to you this so, week? Okay, well, let's just say Thanksgiving went well with my family. I will say we had Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving. Late Thanksgiving to everyone <laughs> in the States. It was, it was very nice. It was just me and my son and my mother. I cooked. It was great. During the night of Thanksgiving, when we were like, we went to bed and everything, and I had to get up and use the bathroom because that's normal, right? When you're when in the middle of the night, sometimes you just wake up and nature calls. So I went to the bathroom, and I usually will, like, you know, close, like, leave the door cracked a little bit just in case, you know. I don't know. I'm weird like that. So I leave it open. But this time I decided to just shut it all away. And mind you, I'm half asleep. So I'm doing my thing. And I hear this sh -sh 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 at the door. And I'm like, oh God. I'm like, I don't have time for demons right now. Like, please just go away. Like, I don't want to deal with this. I'm tired. I don't know what's going on. So I'm like, stop. And then <laughs> couple seconds later i hear i'm like oh my god what the hell is at the door right now so i just finished doing what i need to do wash my hands blah 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 and then i open my door ever so slowly and then there's this cute little ginger cat at the door and she looks at me and she goes meow and i'm like <laughs> thank god it was a cat my beautiful little cat and not some scary demon waiting to eat my face when I open this door. But yeah, that's what happens when you're tired at three o'clock in the morning and you get up and you have to go to the bathroom. So I thought I would share it. I thought it was funny, you know, with my cat. Oh, <laughs> she likes to scare me. <laughs> yeah, cats are cats are great like that. That's for sure. So I don't mm -hmm. really have a story necessarily that's scary. I have cats too. I have two cats, Nella and Dakla. And my my week was hectic. Work is crazy because I'm working two jobs at work, so it's a little bit a little bit crazy. Yesterday, Aqua decided that she was gonna play in sheets. So we had sheets on the ground because they were going into the hamper to be washed and she she was literally in the sheets she had her head and her whole like front of her body in the sheets like she was chasing something and just being crazy rolling in it and then she gets out she looks at me flops on her back puts her head back so she's looking at me meow <laughs> like mom i'm just playing having a good time <laughs> yeah she's just like see you mom everything's good <laughs> <laughs> Life is great. Uh, cats are hilarious. I gotta tell you, they are the life of a cat. Mm. They love to lay on things. They love to scare their parents, <laughs> um, for sure. Oh yeah. But they're great animals. I I love my cat. I wouldn't trade it for anything else. Mm -hmm. I agree. My cats scare the bejesus out of me sometimes, especially. When I play horror games, Nala or Aqua likes to jump up in my lap yeah. and I'm not paying attention because, you know, I don't notice there's a cat on the ground and, uh, you know, then I get spooked by my cat. <laughs> yeah, my ginger, she likes to like when I'm playing spooky games, she likes to go near my feet. So like I will feel like this tickle on the bottom of my feet and I'll be like, oh, my God, what is that? And then there's this orange cat going right past me i'm like can you please not go near my feet you're scaring me oh, no. she loves to do that <laughs> she loves to do it she loves to scare her mom that's her like one thing in life is to scare me <laughs> i gotta scare my mom it's my job yeah exactly <laughs> uh, 
cats are great. They they can be spooky. They can freak us out. But you know they're adorable, so it's fine. Yeah, they're great companions. Yeah, that's for sure. For sure. Hey, what do you have planned for us today? Well, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our uh, under the bed segment, where we're gonna read off some spooky urban legends to our our viewers listeners our little ghoulies yes our you little guys are ghoulies. Our ghoulies now <laughs> that is the name we have picked for you <laughs> you are now officially our ghoulies welcome to welcome to our spook fest yes <laughs> the spooky <laughs> well urban legends are great there's so many of them i know as a child i loved them i love looking them up i love watching them i love all that great stuff Mm hmm yeah i i used to really be into them too especially japanese ones because you know the japanese are real good when it comes to spooky shit yes they are the best with it especially like the one i heard like you can go into the forest and it's something like you go in but not necessarily you'll come back out that mm -hmm. one is like very very scary like ooh, <laughs> i guess i'm never visiting that forest <laughs> right <laughs> Yeah, I think I know which I think I know which forest you're talking about. It's the same for me. Didn't they make is that the movie The Forest based off that forest? Yeah, they yes, they did make a movie based off of it actually. Mm hmm With like twins? It's actually pretty good. Yes, it's twins, yeah. yeah. It's like it's for people who like have like mental illness or suffer from mental illness and stuff like that. They would go there to be like I guess it's like where they would go, I don't want to say, like, necessarily where they would go for their last resting place. Like, where they would go to die, mm -hmm. I guess. Because it has a Japanese so. name, and I know it's nicknamed the, I'm not, the, you know. If you, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I'm not saying the word, because YouTube will eat my head. But, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. the ending of your life forest It's not the, the right it's the right phrase, just not the right word, but you guys get it, I'm sure. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so I have, I picked two that are Canadian, because I'm Canadian, uh, and I thought it'd be fun. Ooh. I know that Sammy's got some pretty spooky ones, too. I do, I do. <laughs> so who would like to start? Would you like to start, or would you like me to start? Um, I can go first, I guess. Sure. Yeah, I want to know more about Canadian urban legends. I don't know <laughs> any, so this is exciting. Well, you're about to learn at least one. <laughs> 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 this one is basically our Canadian version of the Loch Ness Monster. Um, but of course, we are not in Scotland. We're in Canada. So this is basically our version of that. So I'll give you guys a little bit of a background and then I'll read you guys the, the legend, if you will. So um, in Canadian folklore, the Ogopogo is a lake monster said to inhabit Okanagan, Okanagan Lake in British Columbia, Canada. Some scholars have charted the entity's developments from First Nations folklore and widespread water monster folklore motifs. The Ogopogo now plays a role in commercial symbolism and media representation representation of the region which is true uh i have i i, I have a stuffed animal of the ogopogo <laughs> <laughs> that i actually got when what i went a name i know right the ogopogo somewhere it has why its name is the ogopogo supposedly is in this lake and there is a ship uh called the ss sycamus that is on this lake uh that you can like go in it doesn't actually move it's just it's kind of like the queen mary is just floating there and uh you can go walk around and learn about the ship and um in their gift shop off the ship uh on land there is little ogopogos <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what we get here the lake that it comes from is the largest of the five interconnected freshwater lakes in the okanagan valley and it was they okanagan was named after the first nations people who inhabited the area the lake monster the lake monster has been mostly described as being a serpentine creature with dark smooth sorry with smooth dark skin 
with a large body thicker than a telephone pole being up to 50 feet in length. The monster is said to move at incredible speeds, coiling its body in vertical undulations. I don't know what the fuck that means, but that's what it says. <laughs> and propelling itself with a powerful tail. I can say one thing. I don't want to meet the Ogopogo <laughs> at all. <laughs> I'll stay far away from that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's actually, uh, they, they have a little, uh, I'll, I'll insert a picture over beside us here of what he looks like in case you guys have never seen the Ogopogo. But he basically just looks like a I water snake. I was going to say, I haven't. <laughs> he's pretty cute. Ooh. He's kind of cute looking. He's. I, I yeah. think he's supposed of to be scary. Of course you but... would say it was cute. <laughs> I think of course thinks... you would say a giant serpent snake would be cute. Okay. <laughs> you know me, gaming wifey. Spooky things are cute to me. <laughs> Everybody, the snake is cute. It's a big giant snake, but it's cute. Well, we believe you, Sophie. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad somebody believes me. <laughs> Basically, I guess they have a. It, ex it received its name on a night in 1924 when the strains of an English music and it goes. His mother was an earwig, his father was a whale, a little bit of a head, and hardly any tail, and the Ogopogo was his name. And Ooh, that's uh, how he they... He many things. Yeah. I guess it's supposed to be, you know, like, explaining that it's a water creature. <laughs> but, uh... I almost called yeah. it the Ogipogi. <laughs> I mean, you could call it that, I guess. The Ogipogi. <laughs> <laughs> The Ogie Pogie. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is interesting, I will say, because we have our own, like, well, I've heard of the Loch Ness Monster, but, like, it's very interesting that you guys have your own, so. I know, right? Could you imagine seeing a creature like that, though? Like a mythical creature? I guess that's what you would call it, right? Yeah. Um, I would be terrified. But it does seem really neat, like, of the things that it's made of. Yeah. I think that would be pretty... I don't know. You know me. I think if I, like, saw something spooky, I'd be either like, this is amazing, or, oh, dear God, help me. This is so cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I agree. Well, mine is not about... Loch Ness Monsters, but it is a woman that you don't want to scorn. Uh oh. It's not a woman that you want to mess with because, you know, you never know what's going to happen when you mess with the wrong woman, right? True. <laughs> so this story is based off of in Iowa. It's called the Stony Hollow Road. As the saying goes, a woman scorn is not someone you want to mess with. Mm, very key there. Mm -hmm. Lucinda of the town of Burlington is no different. Legend says that when her fiancé failed to meet her there as a promise one night, she threw herself off the bluffs along the stony hollow road. Ever since her ghost had appeared to countless people, what's much worse is if she leaves a rose at your feet, it is said that you're destined to die 24 hours or so, the story goes. So basically, she was really mad that her fiancé didn't show up. She threw herself off the cliff, and now she haunts the hollow road over there. And it says if, you, if she leaves you that rose, you're basically got 24 hours to live kind of spooky it's a little bit spooky especially if you look behind us there's a rose on the wall oh you didn't even <laughs> notice yeah there is uh oh oh no 24 hours 24 hours no. <laughs> well we we didn't see her we, nah. we didn't see her so we're good and but, it's not at our feet i mean i guess I Exactly. So I guess I'm never going to go to Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Well, at least I'm never going to go down that hollow road, the stony hollow road. I don't think I'm ever going to drive down there because mm -mm. I, I don't think I want to mess with Lucinda. 
Yeah. I I want to stay far away from her as possible. Totally. Well, you know what they say. But I just thought it was an interesting story. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, very spooky. I'm going to make sure that I never go to Iowa and there are never roses at my feet and I should be a okay. Because you know what they say, hell no, hath no fury. Scary women. Yeah, hell hath no fury exactly. like a woman scorned. Or... <laughs> exactly, and uh, she seems to be angry. Very, very angry. For a very long time. How many years? She's been uh, angry for uh, a really long time. Very long time. She's holding a grudge. Yep, for sure. Yep. We can we can blame her fiance for that one. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks, dude. Yeah. Way to go. You ruined it for everybody else that goes down that road now. <laughs> <laughs> you fucked the rest of the population over. Exactly. <laughs> Shouldn't have made her yeah, mad, I just thought dude. Thought it was a cool story. It's I, it, I thought it would be a cool story because it's like you know, how many how many of us can relate to things like that like we have like never our relationships never go the way we always intend them to be and uh it's kind of like that her relationship she depended on him and he just never showed yeah we've all been ghost well maybe once in our life <laughs> ghosted yeah <laughs> but have you been ghosted by a ghost Ooh, that's the question that's the question <laughs> I just discovered that apparently you guys all know the Stanley Hotel, which uh, the over which The Shining was filmed in. That was, I believe, the name of the hotel in the movie was the Overlook Hotel. I actually have never seen The Shining. Nobody yell at me. I promise I'll watch it one day. Uh, but what? <laughs> so he's like, "How dare you?" That's a crime. <laughs> You're banished the shadow realm. Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's no how good. How dare. I know. How dare I have a spooky podcast and not seen one of the most iconic horror movies ever. Yeah. I mean, I know Here's of it. There's Johnny. Red rum. <laughs> Red rum. Red rum. <laughs> Red rum. I think the scariest part of that movie is the lady in the bathtub. That lady forever will haunt my dreams. Like, she's... <laughs> the scary she's the scariest thing in that movie i think <laughs> oh shit well i guess i'll have to mm -hmm. be prepared to be afraid of my bathtub yeah kind of or the <laughs> twins it's either the twins or her but i i will definitely say she is the scariest thing in that movie no oh, lovely can't wait mm -hmm. one of these days yeah it'll happen we'll have to watch it together yeah, yeah. we'll have to watch it together I'm okay with it. <laughs> so you guys have your own kind of thing like that in Canada? Apparently, yeah. In, in New Brunswick, I believe. Yes, Ooh. New Brunswick. Um, so that's far. Do tell, do tell. From where I am. But um, it's on the sea, so that makes sense. And it's called the Algonquin Resort. And it's been open for over a century. And apparently, just by looking at it, it looks haunted and to be fair it does and it does kind of look like the stanley hotel which the overlook hotel is you know renamed in the movie the shining apparently nothing really happened there they it it looks spooky for sure and there was a fire in 1914 that almost destroyed the entirety of the original wooden structure but somehow the blaze spared the painter and kitchen wings and now the iconic tower where mysterious lights are seen flashing. The figure of a ghostly woman in a white dress also makes an appearance in the tower's window from time to time. Most of the ghosts that wander the hotel's hallways were not murdered or unhappy. Instead, they enjoyed the hotel so much they wanted to remain there forever. Aww. One of the ghosts most famous sorry, one of the most famous of the Algonquin ghosts is the bellboy who shows people to their rooms and tells them about the property only to evaporate before he can accept his tip. Guests are encouraged to leave a small gratuity for him on the bell desk so he can collect the next time he appears. A night watchman can be heard making his rounds, keeping the hotel safe even in the afterlife. People know it's him by the sound of his footsteps pacing and the jangling of his keys. There is also an apparition of a senior staff woman setting and rearranging tables in the dining room. 
All right. Could you imagine a whole staff of ghosts? Like, how can you do? You're just going to see something go by you. Like, you know, do you want a drink, sir? And you just see this apparition going past you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd be like, uh, like sure. Sure, you, um, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have the bellboy, like, wants to carry your stuff. We should, I, I bet, like, some people should leave gum like they did in Home Alone. Like, here, here's some gum. Here's tip. <laughs> yeah, here, have some gum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here's some gum in the afterlife. Happy chewing. <laughs> Definitely. No, but I think that's neat. I think it's really neat. I think that would be something that I would really want to go see because, like, it's more, like, friendlier stuff. So, it... I wouldn't mind going there and seeing all the haunted stuff. I think that would be cool. Yeah, and to as... To see the apparitions and stuff. Yeah, I mean, as a Canadian, I've never been to New Brunswick, so I'd be down. <laughs> yeah, you gotta put that on your list now. Things yeah. to go see. The haunted hotel. The haunted but that's neat. Canadian I really like that hotel. story. Yeah. Kind of spooky, I like but... it because I love The Shining so much that like that intrigues me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really it. I'll um I'll have to send you the the link and show you the picture because it does look very much like the Stanley Hotel, which is very interesting. I do have another story myself. I think I'm gonna stick with like the Ingi women. I think I'm gonna stick with the Ingi <laughs> women still. So. Because, oh. I mean, they make they make good for good stories. Yeah, they do. Very um, true. This one is called... This is uh, called The Witch of Yazoo. And it supposedly happened in Mississippi. Said that um, while living on the Yazoo River, an old woman allegedly lured boatmen to their deaths with her magic. Well, one day, the local sheriff chased her into the swamp. She drowned in the quicksand. She put a curse upon the town. And then in 20 years, she said she would return to set the city aflame. Well, in 1904, the city was hit with a massive fire and believed to be the work of the witch. The next day, when the people went to visit her grave at the Glenwood Cemetery, they saw the chain's length around her grave had been broken, or so the urban legend goes. So, basically, a witch got her revenge, right? What it sounds she's like. like. you ain't gonna mess with me. She's like, you ain't gonna mess with me. And she's like, I'm, I'm gonna set fire because you guys killed me. I drowned in quicksand, so I'm gonna come back and revenge my death. That's and supposedly great. she did. Supposedly? That's pretty All these pretty angry spooky. women, Right? Right? <laughs> it kind of reminds me yeah, you of. You don't want to uh, mess with an angry woman, man. There's yeah. the fire, man. We got, we got fire. Mm -mm. We got fire. We definitely uh, don't play around when we're upset, huh? Mm, very true. Very true. Hear that, people? Don't piss off I, a woman. I thought it was cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't don't piss off a woman because mm -mm. you never know what's gonna happen. It kind of reminds me of uh, yeah. Darkness Falls. Mm -hmm. With the the sort of like curseish thing where it's like, oh, you guys killed me, but with my last breath, I'm gonna place a curse on you, and then I'm gonna come back and haunt y'all. Exactly, and then that's exactly what she did. She may have did it twenty years later, but she definitely got her revenge. Mm -hmm. you know? She set that fire and it burned down. So Yikes. I thought it was cool. I thought it was spooky, mm -hmm. and I wanted to continue on the path of a. An angry woman. <laughs> Tammy wanted to keep the theme of the day. <laughs> yes, yes. Like, yes, I did. <laughs> Gotta have the spooky ladies, or the angry ladies, I guess, in this case. Well, and it makes sense, because Mississippi and the swamp area, so it definitely, like, you definitely don't want to go into, like, the woods and stuff over there in the swamp. Like, a lot of accidents happen, too. I guess, like the alligators and stuff in the swamp i'd be oh. scared kind of yeah i don't really yeah. know that i'd want to go to the swamp either <laughs> yeah 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 there's all kinds of like dangerous stuff but i mean hey i'd like to go visit mississippi though it sounds fun <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, it could be interesting for sure. I don't know. Uh, I I don't know how uh, fun it would be going to Iowa, but you know, Mississippi sounds like it could be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it would be fun for sure. It's like all the cool stuff happens in other like you know other states uh, mm-hmm. other than mine like i never hear any cool spooky stuff it's always in west virginia or mississippi or iowa those are all the good stuff happens all the spooky stuff happens spooky i need to go stuff. visit those places right it's yeah, the same so with looking up normal stuff yeah it's the same with looking up stuff for here like i was like looking up the urban legends before we started today and i was like you know looking and i was like okay okay so we got like prince edward island we got uh british columbia Kelowna area we got like all these other places what about my province what the hell nothing spooky happens here (laughs) (laughs) yeah i was trying to find something for me too and i'm like wow like i guess we're just boring (laughs) we don't have any of the scary stuff but to be honest like you know the states like it's is like really like deep down in the south where stuff happens especially like since the civil war and stuff i know a lot of states over there like see a lot of things that happen because of the wars and stuff like there's like the forest where they still see like apparitions of like soldiers walking and stuff like that and i'm like well that's pretty freaking neat i wish i lived over there but again i don't so i'll never see that but unless i travel there but yeah there's nothing fun that ever happens where i live it's always somewhere else but that's okay it makes for great stories right yeah exactly (laughs) it's just like the the conjuring house is somewhere in the states right yes it is i don't know which one it is but i want to say rhode island or close to rhode island i mean it makes sense a lot of stuff happened in rhode island so i i definitely would agree with that probably the conjuring house is another whole like thing of its own Mm -hmm. so many people went to visit that so many things have happened like it's such an interesting house to go to especially like because actual things happen there imagine sleeping overnight in that house imagine the stuff you would see yes i I would pay to sleep (laughs) in that house be like please spook me show me what is scary in this house please spook me ghosties (laughs) right i would be like just one spook one spook that i can bring back with me and i'll be happy (laughs) (laughs) right I would, I'd be so happy to even, like, go there, but if I could spend the night in the Conjuring house, heck yeah. Yeah. We definitely have to, like, you know, make a trip one day to do something like that. Yeah. Even if it is, like, I I actually want to go see the Salem Witch Trials, because I think that would be something really interesting and cool to go see, too. And just learn more about history over in that, you know, area. Yeah, I really want to go um, also to the Lizzie Borden house. I don't know where it is. Mm, I think it's yeah. in, I want to say it's in yeah. Massachusetts, maybe, I think. Yeah, I know the Salem, I know the Salem witch trials are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's Salem, Salem, Massachusetts, right? Because mm-hmm. you guys have mm-hmm. more than one Salem in the States, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nobody yelled at me. I don't remember where Lizzie Borden's house is, but I know that it was a bed and breakfast. They changed it into a bed and breakfast. So you can actually stay the night there. I wonder if you would hear, like, any sounds or you see any stuff. It's always, like, by chance. But when I think of stuff like that happening, like like tragic incidents happening or stuff like that there you're more likely to be able to see like things happen in this in those situations so i would love to go visit stuff like that i would love to take a trip and maybe like record some stuff i think that would be cool too yeah that'd be really cool spook hour it's always fun learning more about spooky stuff exactly <laughs> it's a spook hour spook tour hour. around the world <laughs> around yeah, the states at least <laughs> right yeah it'd be fun it would be fun to be able to do that because then you're taking a little part of each place with you so that would be really neat yeah that'd be pretty cool for sure but i definitely feel like we had some interesting urban legends let us know 
how you guys, if you guys liked our urban legends, if you liked the stories that we picked, um, I'd love to hear that in the comments. Or if you have your own urban legends that you would like to share, I love to hear those too. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be neat to share back and forth. Always great to hear from like, you know, part of the community or the viewers and see their opinions on it. Hmm. It'd definitely be cool to see if you guys have any urban legends that you know of in your city, province, state, wherever it is that you live. Um, I'm sure there's some that we don't know about that it would be cool to learn about, especially yeah. from other people. Yeah, all over the world, like especially somebody from a different part of the world. It would be very cool to hear those stories. Mm -hmm. Like we have any, I know that there are, like I said, the Japanese are, are very very good at, at spooky and i know that like people that live in russia have a lot of spooky stories as well because you know the games we play are are well the ones that you have introduced me to that we like so much emeka games i'm pretty sure they are russian question mark i want to say yeah maybe yeah yeah i believe so i believe they are but yeah, a lot of, I think a lot of good ghost stories, like the best good story, ghost stories are from part of, you know, the other side of the world and stuff. Because mm -hmm. like, even with like, my son's father's from Mexico and he, he has told me some really great stories and it's like, wow, it's, it's really scary there. <laughs> yeah, I even like, yes. even when we watch, um like spooky videos um and stuff like that i feel like there's a lot that are in mexico like this story comes from mexico or they filmed this in mexico or whatever and um it makes it makes me wonder what happened in mexico that that makes the ghosts just flock there i think it's just a different way of life it's very mm -hmm. open so like the cemeteries here or like how you guys have cemeteries is not the same there it's mm -hmm. like more open and it's like it's more open so it's like things echo more and like it's darker there like they don't have like all the lights like we do like if you're the town like um the town that my son's father live in, it just, it's very dark at night and it's just like, you know, your mind runs wild, but it's also the sounds that are happening during the night, the dogs barking and howling and like, you know, your imagination goes off, but I'm pretty sure it's just like a, di a different atmosphere. So like it brings more of that spook factor, you know? Mm, yeah, that makes sense. But I, I would love to see that because that would be, that would be cool. Right? Spooky. But we will try, anybody who, like, writes in the comments, we will try to answer you or get back to you as best as we can. And I'm pretty sure, I believe Soki said in our first episode that she will try to set up an email to anybody who would want to send experiences in. We would love to hear it, like we said. If you want, we would love to share your stories, so, or ideas. If anybody has any ideas, please, in the comments, feel free. I think this is about the time we say goodbye, friends. But, Soki, you have anything else to say to it or add to it? No, I don't think so. I think you are correct. It's about time that we uh, go back to hiding in the darkness for the week. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, right? <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. So, when we um, come out of the dark. When we come <laughs> out of our dark. We come out of the darkness to spook you all. Mm-hmm. And then we go back to lurking. <laughs> well, ghoulies, make sure that you lock your doors. And close your closets. And check under your bed. Because you never know what's lurking in the dark. Until we, we meet, meet again. again.